and we are back with high stakes MMA UFC 263 uh, Adesanya versus Vittori 2 recap it was a, a sick night of fights uh, all the way up the card uh, the best didn't turn out the greatest but overall the excitement was uh, was awesome all the way up the card and, and uh, a bunch of great fights um, you enjoyed them yeah no I, I uh, enjoyed the fights man not the outcomes necessarily but um, yeah as far as the betting night goes it wasn't wasn't that good i did get bailed out on a long shot parlay but um other than that it was a uh, pretty pretty much of a shit show so uh let's uh go up the card and start to uh, start with the first fight it was between uh carlos philippe and jake collier and jake collier when i watched the weigh-ins and he did look like he was in a little better shape than last time so kind of thought he was taking this a little more serious um i did throw a small parlay together with him on it but um didn't end up panning out um total strikes he did outland him 130 to 94 so i don't know man if that was a robbery or whatnot i i did think philippe won the rounds his uh his strikes were more significant i felt like but um yeah how'd you how'd you see that fight yeah um same there i mean i thought uh, collier came out strong in the first round he was definitely winning the first round um he swelled him up uh but then the second and third you really start to see felipe turn it on he was starting to land the power shots and uh, he was really slipping all Coyer's punches after that, and um, and he really started doing more of the damage. And you see Coyer start to fade as well. And um, you know it was a split decision win, um, which you know I, I could I could see um, see that, but it did kind of look like Felipe pretty much um, you know took over on the second and won the second and third to get the win, which uh, we both you know we both took Felipe uh, in that fight. Um, so yeah, it was a good one. Next one up the card was. Uh, was uh, Zian versus um, Luigi Vonder uh, 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 Von, uh That that one as well was a, was a good fight. Um, Zian, we was controlling it uh, for the first two rounds and, and keeping him at bay. And uh, you know he had a nice jab that he kept landing on uh, on Vonderimi. But then um, that third round, man, I wish he was fighting like that the whole time. Uh, he came out guns blazing and um, you know almost got him out of there for a minute. Um, you know, uh, looks like total strikes was very similar. Uh, I think it was 50 to 43 in Luigi's favor. Um, so that was another one that could have, you know, could have went either way. Uh, but that, that was a great fight. Yeah, man, I was pretty uh, big on Luigi in this spot. I thought he had a, a clear path to victory, either on the ground or on the feet. But um, when they, you know, first initially squared up, Frost did a good job at keeping him at bay. He was landing some good stiff jabs. It was kind of popping uh, Luigi's head back and whatnot. And when Luigi did try to f shoot, you know, in that first round while they're, you know, both strong and fresh, uh, Zion showed, you know, good hips and good uh, good control for the taller fighter. You know, usually the shorter fighter can get under him and put him on their ass and whatnot. But he showed good defense for being a tall fighter and, uh, you know, uh, did, did work in that first round and outstruck Luigi uh, pretty significantly, kind of doubled up his numbers in, on that one. And then going into the second round, it was a better round for Luigi. I thought he personally won it. Um... And it, it was a back and forth battle. They both had their moments and whatnot. Um, and then in the third round, it was clear, uh, clearly Luigi. He almost, you know, I had him out of there at that one point. So I kind of thought it was a, a bad decision, but I mean, I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't blame him when you go to the decision, uh, the, the scorecards like that, you know. Right. Um, next one up the card uh, was uh, Young Chase Hooper taking on um, Peterson. And uh, yeah, th this one, this one as well. I thought Peterson did a great job. I mean, he did come in a, a little overweight um, for the fight, uh, but he, he he basically controlled the fight um, for the most part. Um, Hooper did um, did threaten with um, some submissions. I think it was the leg locks at, at times. But uh, Peterson was landing the hardest shots. He he out uh, he, he barely outstruck him. Um, it shows uh, one hundred two to, to ninety eight. But man, he was precise. He only threw uh, one twenty four total strikes and landed one hundred and two of them. So. Um, he he was he was he was catching him and um, yeah and, he, and I thought he pretty clearly uh, won the fight there. Yeah, I was uh I seen this one when uh, this was another one where that's why it's important to you know watch the wins and whatnot. When I watched the wins, I kind of just got a a feeling from Peterson more or less me, being that he was overweight and whatnot. I think it was more of a tactical miss, what uh, in my opinion. So coming in here, he was a fresher fighter. And uh, Chase is a dog man for being so young. He he he's he really got potential. He really does. He's just lacks a lot of uh striking defense and, and and i really think he just lacks a lot of that grown man strength to be honest he still really hasn't filled out his body yet he's still only like 22 or something like that so i think the farther he goes 
Uh, I mean, the later it goes for his career, if he's not getting beat up too much, um, I, I think he has a bright future still, even though he's you know taking L's after L's. Um, but Peterson did his thing. He did come in here. It wasn't too impressive for me. Uh, but, yeah, he got the win, nonetheless. Um, going into the next fight, we had a, a quick one, man. I was j away for a second, and it was already over. Uh, Terrence McKinney versus Matt Favola. The steamroller. He got steamrolled on this one, man. Um, what can we say? It was a, a initial, just an initial square up and landed a, a one-two down the pipe and knocked him out. It was a, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, that was that was a a, a beautiful uh, coming out party for for uh, Terrence there. Uh, hopefully his knees all right. You know, I, I hate oh, when they shit, do that. About that yeah. yeah, but man, he came out and just shot one down the pipe. And, and dropped him. I had Favola winning the fight, you know, going into that was my pick. I thought he was, you know, but he didn't have no time to even, you know, the fight didn't even start. I mean, he just he just blasted him and uh, took it, and, man, that, that kid's got some potential. Uh, hopefully he's all right because I'd like to see him back, you know. Um, it looks like he likes to stay active too, so excited to see that guy in the future. Yeah, that was crazy. He blew his knee out celebrating. It looked like, well, I don't know how, we don't know how bad it was. We've seen that before with Johnny Walker when he was trying to do the worm and blew out his shoulder and, kind of set him back man like uh i think it was like six months or whatnot so yeah hopefully mckinney can get a hopefully it wasn't too bad and get a quick turnaround and uh build that momentum because he just fought seven days ago and, and viciously laid a man out and he just fought uh you know again tonight and, and had a, had the same results caught another body so uh definitely look forward to mckinney in the future yeah uh next one up was uh panny versus uh davis and man this one um this one I, I kind of I thought this one was was a robbery to be honest with you I thought I thought Davis won the fight um the first the first round I, I do kind of give it to uh uh Kiazad, um a little you know but after that I think Davis just you know I wish she would have wrestled more but uh, she was outlanding her uh, by a lot I mean uh, uh, 147 to 124 uh, she had 25 leg kicks uh, to only one um, she had the takedown in the fight uh, you know she she did most of the work I thought you know on the feet she's um, she's one of those that that she really wears it you know on her face um kind of you know when, when she's getting hit she it looks worse than it is um but uh I, I thought she did she did well enough to get the win um you know and two of those judges had it 30 to 27 which i thought is just freaking ridiculous but uh however the case uh she, you know the um panty got the win and uh she's moving on yeah i, I wasn't uh wasn't thrilled by that decision either um you know alex davis alexis davis did do what she, i thought she shouldn't have been doing she was striking the whole time and she didn't uh you know shoot that many takedowns and whatnot and she really got away from that i feel like she was able to do that more she only shot once and was successful on it and you know what i mean she should have went back to that and kept going to it like i thought she might have but yeah she stood up and uh you know tried to box with panty for for the whole 15 minutes and the judges saw it the other way so can't be mad at her she had a, a horrible game plan in my opinion but, um, yeah, that, that scoring the 30-27 is kind of crazy. And going into the next fight, uh, this one was uh, pretty impressive. Uh, Mozar Evolev taking on Hakeem Mean Dewadu. Uh, Mozar came in here, man, and just controlled him from, from gate. And, you know, from the first couple minutes, he did stand with him, showing that he wasn't scared. And I kind of think that threw Hakeem off. And that opened up some good shots for Evolev because he was able to land on him a couple, you know, a couple good, good clean strikes. Uh, but then, you know, going into the second round, third round, he just literally just took over and uh, dominated him, man. It was kind of, it was, I had some friends over there like Khabib, like almost, you know, because he was just taking him, taking him out. Um, he had nothing for him. Uh, Akeem just kind of wilted under his pressure and didn't, offered virtually nothing for him. Total strike count was uh, 193 from Evolev to 60 to Duwadu. And yeah, that, that's coming from a striker, so... He, he pretty much beat the shit out of him from, from go. Evolev had eight, almost nine minutes of control time. So, yeah, man, that's that's how the fight went. It was a, a good showing for Mozart because uh, Hakeem, Hakeem's a, a good prospect in his own right. Yeah, Evolev, um, you know, came out, you know, did what we expected him to do. Uh, he went out there, he chain wrestled. Um, he controlled the fight, like I said, from the word go. Um, there was a, a spot in the third round where... Uh, Hakeem did, you know, he did land something and, and uh, you know, he, he caught him and, and wobbled him for a minute and, uh, and, and you know, tried to try to go for the finish. But then uh, as soon as Evolev was, was able to get that back to the ground, he was able to, you know, ride it out to the, you know, to the end of the bell and, uh, you know, secure that victory. 
So, yeah, it was a good fight. Um, that dude's going to be a problem for sure in the featherweight division. Uh, the next one up was, um, th it was a good fight with, um, with Murphy taking on Calderwood. And, uh, you know, Murphy, she did get outstruck, but she did hit, hit her with the harder shots, I feel like. Um, she uh, did was able to get the one takedown and, you know, I think secured that round for her. And uh, she, she, you know, uh, I, I called her what did come in, come on a, a little strong in the third. Um, but then uh, Murphy was just able to stifle her and, 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 you know, and take the victory. Yeah, I personally thought the, she won the first and the second, clearly. I think JoJo won the third. Um, I could see why people would say it would be a robbery, but that's just what happens when it's a close fight. And Lauren was my dog of the, uh, of the week. So I was glad that I did, uh, you know, get that one correct. Um, but yeah, man, other than that, uh, Lauren's a tough girl. I feel like she almost had her out of there in that one position, uh, for, I mean, not completely out of there, but Herb was looking at it pretty close and, um, she was letting off a lot of strikes. So, uh, good on Lauren. She's on a, quite a roll right now. It's going to be a lot for her, uh, to ask for her to try to throw in Valentina. So, I mean, maybe we'll get a good line on it so we could throw a Valentina on a parlay. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, man, as of now, uh, Murph Dog went out there and handled business, man. I, I, I'm, I'm glad for her. Yeah, next one up, uh, we had uh, Eric Anders taking on uh, Stewart. And, uh, yeah, man, this was kind of – uh, they kind of picked up where they left off. Um, Stewart, um, he, he did he did have, uh, you know, a couple moments in there. Uh, but uh, for the most part, um, Anders just was, was kind of just steamrolling him, um, you know, through the, through the, uh, the fight. And uh, he landed the more harder punches. He kept, uh, you know, he had him uh, taken. Uh, he didn't take him down, but uh, whenever Stewart did take him down, he was able to reverse it and land and ended up on top. And that's when he did a lot of damage. And um, you know, he won the round. So that was an awesome fight. I think he got one of those was a ten eight, I believe. And uh, yeah, but a great fight for Anders. And um, yeah, it looked good, man. He finished finished this out so he can get Stewart in the in the rearview mirror. Yeah, I was pretty big on Eric uh, uh, Anders in this one. Uh, yeah, like you said, we just seen this fight, man, a month and a half ago, and, and they picked up right where they left off. Although Darren did look like he uh, he was a uh, you know a little bit more fresher this time around, he landed a big takedown slam on Eric, which was pretty impressive. But he didn't do anything with it, and he ended up just getting out position, like you said, and uh, reversed and um, pounded on man. He almost got uh, you know there were like like just in the last fight we were speaking about, the referee was taking a close look at it, and they were on this one as well when uh, Anders was pounding him out. Overall, he did get the unanimous decision, which I'm uh, pretty happy about because um, he was one of my lo uh, legs in my parlay, although the parlay didn't cash. Um, yeah, we had that read right for sure. Um, going into the next fight, uh, it was against Drew Dober against Brad Riddell. Uh, on this one, man, uh, I had Drew Dober initially, but when we came to the weigh-ins, I ended up flip flipping my pick, taking Brad Riddell. Uh, he's the one that actually helped me out on my long shot long shot parlay um but man the fight as long uh, for the whole 15 minutes it was a barn burner they were going back and forth it was uh, exactly what we expected uh brad O'Dell did look like he was uh in some some trouble in the first round and he didn't look like he was able to take the power that dover was throwing his way but as the the rounds progressed um you know he showed that he was able to get his uh you know wits about him and and keep himself there and uh you know put dover in some spots as well and then in the third round almost had him out of there it looked like but yeah, it was a good fight. Um, probably fight of the night, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we'll my, in my opinion, that this was definitely fight of the night. Uh, it was it was an awesome fight back and forth. Uh, these guys was brawling. Surprisingly, uh, Riddell was the one with the with all the takedowns. And uh, man, he, he's he's showing a lot of improvement in in his ground game, which is something he's going to need to 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 make it to the upper echelon of the division. Uh, but uh, Drew Dober is just a tough dude, man. He's got a chin. Um, these guys went to war. And uh, yeah, I thought I also thought uh, Riddell deserved that win. Um, next up was crazy man. It was a sick, uh, <laughs> nasty submission uh, with Craig taking on uh, Jamal Hill. He pulls guard, uh, you know, in the, right away in the, in the first round, which is which is insane. Um, you know, he had multiple options there uh, to finish the fight, but man, he was just mangling his arm. Um, yeah, as we, as you heard on the broadcast, that uh, Hill ended up being just dislocated, but. God damn that that looked broken, you know, it looked snapped in half, but uh you know, hell of a performance. I, I had I picked Hill, he was on my parlays. Um I, I expected him to to um come out and destroy him, but uh it just shows you Craig Craig's jiu jitsu is, is he's high level and uh he's gonna he, he he's dangerous in the light heavyweight division with anybody that hits the floor with him. 
Yeah, man, he he did that one move where uh where you know John Jones fucked up Glover's uh, arm where he kind of like tucks it and just uh, torques it in a, a weird position and uh, he'll he'll got out of it at first and you know uh, as soon as he got out of it and got clear clear up he went sh- straight back down for a punch which I don't understand why he did it and literally he'll uh, I mean Craig cra- snatched that thing up again and this time uh, took it home with him man and ended up uh, putting the arm bar on him. And just snapped that thing in half. He was hitting them from a. It was like a. It was almost like a triangle with the arm bar right at that point. Yeah. And it was. Uh, and he was just smacking it. Just smacking him, and the arm was just dangling. Man, I had Hill on pretty much uh, a lot of tickets. Man, this this one this one hurt me. Um, I thought Hill was going to be able to put the hands on him, man. But yeah, uh, Craig Craig. <laughs> yeah, he was a wizard down there, man. Hill showed poor IQ going falling to the mat. It was just like uh, Clarissa Shields the other day, but she, although she ended up winning. But, uh, you know, she followed her opponent to the mat when she clearly got up. You, you know, you guys are stand-up fighters. You should never want to engage with somebody that has as much grappling experience and wins. You know, in MMA fighting, it's not just grappling alone. Sometimes the grappling don't translate, but doesn't translate. But, um, you know, Craig's jiu-jitsu translates, and, uh, you know, he just he followed him down, showed that poor IQ, and he paid the price for it, man. His shit got... Luckily, it wasn't a break. It's just a dislocation. Um, he probably has a little bit of torn ligaments in there, but yeah, I don't. I don't expect him to be out too long. But damn, that one hurt, man. That one hurt. Uh, going into the next one, uh, this was Bilal Muhammad versus Damian Maya, and it was just spam city, man. Damian just was just spamming takedowns all day. Uh, the total strike count was ninety-two to twenty-three. I don't feel. <laughs> I don't know where all those ninety-two strikes came from. Uh, the significant strike count was 45 to 21 uh, in Bilal's favor. That sounds a little bit more uh, right because, um, you know, in that second round, Damian was catching him with, uh, I feel like, uh, some good shots and whatnot. Uh, he had Bilal, you know, so worried about that takedown. He was just at, at the at the pull of a, a, a head down, you know, uh, had Bilal flinching left and right and trying to tuck his feet as far as he could behind him. But ultimately, he didn't get any of the or one he got one out of the 20 takedowns that he was spamming and um he didn't he you know he wasn't able to capitalize on the feet so yeah he ultimately got outpointed and below ended up winning but uh tough fight for him yeah it was it was a it was a tough fight um you know i had below uh winning going in but uh i definitely thought my was live for you know a submission and it just looks like uh, he couldn't get the takedowns, you know, to, so he could work, so he can work the submissions. Um, he got like you mentioned the one of the twenty uh, of twenty one, and um, you know, he he actually did catch Bilal a few times on the feet, but I just thought uh, Bilal's jab and and he was able to land more, and um, you know, just just showing his defense and, and stuffing those takedowns, you know, got him the win. Um, he was unable to get controlled, which is something that Maya likes to do while he fishes for that sub, so. Uh, yeah, he did, he did was able to squeak it out. You know, it was nothing devastating, but um, no, I pure, purely outvolumed him. Yeah, purely, he, purely but he was him. he was able to get the win. Uh, next one up uh, was uh, was uh, Nate Diaz taking on uh, Fabian Edwards, and uh, you know, with this one, man, what, what can we say? We're Stockton boys, so we're you know we're a little upset he didn't get the win, but uh, as you can all see in that fifth round, that one thirty more seconds in that fight, Nate probably would have finished that. Uh, he had that dude wobbled. Um, even though um, Leon, you know, he, he was he was, you know, the, the first four rounds, he, he was winning the fight, I guess you can say. But uh, at the end of it all, Nate outstruck him uh, 130 to 83. Um, it, it was those takedowns it is really what, uh, you know, how Leon was sewing up those rounds. But, um, you know, Nate's just so crafty. He was able to he was able to roll for the leg, get up. Um, he was able to escape uh, those takedowns easily. And, uh, man, it just shows you that no matter what, if it's an ADS fight, he's never out of it. And, uh, you know, and, and he don't never lose no stock. And, man, I just wish there was another minute in that fight. Um, you know, I don't know if he knew he ha- had him hurt as much as he did um, because, uh, you know, he should have poured it on a little more. Uh, but uh, it, that that was a great, great fight, man. That's why I'm losing my voice. So, Yeah, man, so... Going into this one, man, we already knew that uh, Nate was going to be the fat underdog, but he didn't perform like it in the end, um, and that's why I, I, I picked him as my straight bet because there's definitely value on there, man, to me. You've seen at the end of that fifth round, he he, he almost had him out of there, man. we never seen Leon that stunned like that, and, and, you know, they don't say Nate's a power puncher, but damn, boy, when you got good boxing like that, you don't need to have good power. You just got to have good timing and, you know, those straight punches. That one, too, from Nate's just legendary. Um 
he, he didn't find a home for it all night. But when he did, man, he Leon could not take it. Um, yeah, in the first couple rounds, it was not a blowout by any means. You know, um, uh, Leon's best round came in the fourth and the third. But um, yeah, those cuts look nastier than I mean, they make the fight look worse than it is. But that's just you know all this built up scar tissue that them dudes got. And uh, yeah, man, all these all their fights just make it look worse than it actually is. Um, I. I I'm, I was impressed, man. I was impressed. Nate, uh, Nate almost had him out of there, but completely biased picks on me. Um, but, you know, can't help myself. Um, we'll be uh, cheering for them dudes until our until they, until they stop, man. So, yeah, but in the fifth round, man, uh, Nate put it on him, man. He almost had him out of there. We were so juiced. <laughs> he, he still won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As my, He might have it out here, but his stock rises in that, taking on the number one contender in, you know, the welterweight division, even though he's a, really a, welt, uh, a lightweight. Yeah, man, what else can we say? Yeah, this man's stock continues to rise. Um, I hope, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's next for him, but I hope it's another big, well, it will be another It will big be. Fight. There's, no, there's no doubt. His, I don't think he lost any stock at all. Um, with that performance, and you know, that, that was that was exciting. The the crowd was juiced whenever he started to pour it on, and um, even Leon admitted that he's never been rocked like that. So, um, you know, it was a good showing, and um, you know, just show the killer be killed. That 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 that's how it. You know, he lives by that. Uh, next one up the card was uh, outstanding, man. It was Figueroa taking on Moreno, uh, the new Mexican champion. Man, um, I, I picked Figgy going in. I, I thought Figgy was gonna. I thought he was gonna come and try to and, and try to get him out of there. Uh, but it was the other way around. Uh, Moreno looked sharp. Uh, he looked poised. He looked confident. And uh, man, he, he looked really good on the ground. Um, that was that one takedown. I think that Figgy got that. You know, he was able to to take him down and kind of control him. But he didn't do anything with it. And uh, man, once Moreno um, in that in the third round, I believe, yeah, took his back. He was able to sink that in and, and just finish the job. Yeah, man. Um, Brandon didn't have... I mean, he just went out there and fucking steamrolled him from the beginning. Completely the opposite of what I said was going to happen pretty much on the breakdown. I thought Figgy was going to go out there and did what do what Moreno did to him. But I got to say this, man. In the beginning of the round, it did not look like... Uh, in the beginning of the fight, it didn't look like Figgy was himself at all. He was on his back foot. He didn't, you know... In his normal little gremlin stock forward, he did not come forward at, forward at all. Um, that's kind of two fights already where he was a little bit off, I, and, and now I'm just starting to think: it, is he really, is he really looking off, or is it fucking Moreno just giving him, t- you know, fits? You know what I mean? So, props to Moreno. It was a, a great, great fight. Um, as long as it lasted, he he really went out there and just put the gas pedal on him and he rocked him all over the place. You know, dropped him, ended up subbing him. Um, yeah, I think that was the first time he ever got subbed. So. Um, Man, great fights all the way around. Um, yeah, so the next fight going in this one, it was the main event, which just shortly ra- go wrapped up. And this was between Izzy Adesanya and Marvin Vittori. And, man, this one was uh, it was lackluster, uh, to say the least. I don't really blame uh, Adesanya for this one too much. But Vittori came in there, and, uh, you know, I don't want to blame him either too much because it wasn't like in the beginning of those first couple rounds he was uh, spamming takedowns. But in the third and fourth, I mean, later in the third and the fourth and fifth rounds, he was straight spam and takedowns. He didn't want no part of fight anymore. But in those first couple rounds, he didn't show any uh, respect to uh, Izzy striking. He was backing him up against the cage and, uh, you know, throwing his own strikes and whatnot and, and had Izzy, you know, bouncing out of there. Izzy wasn't able to capitalize like he was norm- normally able to on uh, other opponents. So, yeah, it made for it made for a stale fight in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I thought, uh, you know, I thought Vittori, you know, did decent. Um, he, he took way too many leg kicks. That, that was an issue. I feel he got, Izzy landed 41 of 43 leg kicks. Uh, but uh, Vittori looked like he started to gas in the championship rounds. And uh, and that that's when Izzy re- really, you know, took over. Now, uh, they, they all three judges had it 50-45. I think Vittori might have squeaked in a round or two in there, you know, but um, but uh, it was obvious how the Sonya won that fight, and you know, and uh, and like again finished this chapter as well, and uh, you know, on to the next. I know he was calling out Rob, and uh, yeah, that that's a, that's another exciting rematch I'd like to see. Yeah, man. So betting betting wise, I had some big whiffs, man. I bet I had some props going on Nate fourth and fifth round. Uh, when that fifth round happened, man, I was, man, we were just so juiced. I was uh, hoping that one came through. But, uh, yeah, man, whiffed on that. Um, 
couple spots we left on, but um, overall, uh, and, and the negative this week, so can't can't win them all. But we'll be uh, looking to come back stronger on the next card. I don't even. Know. I think it's Ige versus uh, Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie. Yeah, yes. it was. So a, that's gonna be a good one. It was a tough one. Uh, Hill killed my parlay, and uh, you know I had I had Nate as my live dog, uh, which obviously he is a live dog, so. You know, I I might have lost uh, my bets, but that's still that's still a win, man. To me, I, I you know I was just happy to see him uh, finish that strong, and then uh, my favorite was uh, Figueroa, which you know you seen how that went. So it wasn't the best night of betting for for myself, uh, but uh, it was a great night of fights. Yeah. So where I went really wrong on this week was uh, Hill. Hill pretty much uh, anything I had, uh, you know, some other long shot parlays. Hill killed everything, and I only needed Izzy to close that out after Hill. Um, so though, that that one hurt big time. Um, the other one that kind of hurt was Luigi. I had a s- couple small uh, parlays that would have paid out pretty pretty good, and he killed those. Other than that, the other people that I bet on pretty much came through. Um, so so pretty happy about it. Um, can't, when you're not a when you don't, you don't lose too much, it's not a you know not too much of a too much of a loss, I guess. So yeah, well, I'm hoping for big things next coming couple weeks. All right, so we'll be back next week with uh, Korean Zombie taking on Ige. Uh, you know, please um, continue to listen, uh, like and subscribe, follow us on Twitter. The handles will be in the description. And uh, and, and we enjoyed the, the back and forth in the comments as well this week. So, um, yeah, please do, um, you know, give us your picks as well for the next up and coming card. We, you know, we'd like to talk about it.